Hi guys. Welcome back to City Girl Living on a Budget. I'm Julia with, I'm with Christiana, Well Behaved Wallet. All right. So FinCon Day oh 2. God. Recap. I'm actually kind of tired right now. I know. Oh my gosh. It's like 7.30 and we're done. It's 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock. And we're like But done. we've been up since 6. 6 in the morning, which is like a normal work day, but there's just so much to see and so much to do and so much to learn that it feels like three days in one, right? Like easily. All right. So you want to talk about your day <laughs> <laughs> differently from my day? So, so well, we were together for the first not quarter of the day mm -hmm. from like eight to what? 1030. I think. Gosh. Yeah. So we got there. We woke up at like, we had six, right? Yeah. Six ish. We got out of bed around 637. Six. Yeah. Basically. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we left here at 7.30 to walk over to the hotel to where the convention is being held. Mm -hmm. um, you are really good with directions. We learned this, which is a useful <laughs> skill to have. I tell the whole traveling thing. I had the directions in front of me and I still, I was like, I don't know which way we're supposed to go. Like it said, go Northeast. I'm like, I don't know. Like, what, what am I? A compass? Like, no, I don't know. So, All right, so we know you're not a compass. <laughs> I'm not a compass. No, I am many things. A compass is not one So basically them. we figured out where we were going. Yes. Julia figured out where we were going. We got there, we waited around for probably 15 minutes yeah. until they opened the doors. There were a lot of people. They were very strict. The, the coffee started at 8, and they were they not, not let it before. No, <laughs> not 7.59. And actually, well, and because you walk in, so we, we were let into, like, the international ballroom where they had the speaker, and the coffee was in the back of the ballroom, but they didn't tell you that, so we walked, got a seat up front. Way up front, like a half a mile up front. And then front. we... Finally, we saw the coffee in the back, and I'm like, we really want to walk back there and get coffee. Uh, yes. And we did. We really <laughs> did want to. Yes. So who did we see first? Well, we were waiting outside. We saw Rachel Lynn, Lynn. from um, Rachel Lynn. Lynn. Um, and then Jen. She's in the room with Jen, who is the Budget Bounce. Budget Bounce. Um, and we kind of chatted with them, caught up with them, and then we all sat together, along with Wendy Valencia and um, Kelly. Kelly from Freedom in a Budget. So it, was a neat kind of, it felt like a family reunion or like, you know, like people like long lost cousins and you're like all of a sudden like best friends. With <laughs> like, them. hey, I know you. Really, really cool. Uh, and I love when people like come up to you and say hi, right? That's, mm -hmm. that's cool. Just like some kind of a, it's like, cause I've done that too. I like accost people and they're like, who are you? And I'm like, oh, okay, let me back up. Uh, but it was good to like meet people and to talk and just like be randomly like start conversations with people. Um, we met someone, Amanda. Oh, yeah. She's not a YouTuber. She has a blog. This, this was her first time content. Yes. She lives locally. We're, we have to find her. We have to find out. And her blog was uh, Millionaire Next Year, and it was about the transition from corporate life. She's in corporate consulting um, into working for yourself and freelancing. So that And was, if you're in the, on a YouTube channel, you probably know something about that. Yes, just a little bit. Yeah. You have to get out of that corporate mindset mm -hmm. and be more entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, even if you're not Absolutely. going full time with it. Kind of make yourself get adjusted to that. Yeah. Um, so that was all within the first, what, like half an hour yeah. of, of waiting to go inside yeah. that ballroom. If you're like meeting people and talking with people and it's super exciting. So we get in and the keynote starts at 830 or the, the opening sort of address starts at 830. Um, and then they had the MC come on and then the first speaker was Tanya Hester. Yes. Which I actually saw her. I didn't see her like speak before, but she was in a news clip mm -hmm. about millennials and uh -huh. how, like a different style of living. Okay, cool. Um, so she was the first to speak, mm -hmm. and then they had Ramit Seti. Oh my gosh! I who I love. Okay, so first of all, the MC was Bethany Bayless, who was super um, engaging and motivating and, and sort of bubbly, and she was fantastic. Um, her what's her site? She is, I just looked at her, uh, uh, Heroes at Home. She teaches um, active military uh, about personal finance. Okay. So she was the MC. She was great. And then they had a speaker from the AARP, Martha Boudreaux, which I was actually interested in, right? How about how the fastest growing demographic now is like 75 plus. Oh, yeah. Right? Totally forgot about her. Right? I wrote her down. I was like, I want to look up that chick. She was amazing for like, she was like goals at 70 plus. I'm like, really cool. Um, and like with my mom being so close with my mom, I'm like, oh, like she's got to think about that sort of era that she's into. Yeah. My mom's still, and yeah, my mom's still working actually. Mm -hmm. She's in her seventies. Mine too. Mine too. Still working. Mm -hmm. So it's just interesting to think of that demographic as a fast growing. Cause I mean, I, I mean, my mom's fasted. People are living longer now than they were before mm -hmm. and they're not retiring at like what, 60, 65 that they exactly. stereotypically you'd. You'd retire at 65, exactly. the latest. 
So it's for sure a new um, definition of work and retirement. So I, and then because AARP is a, a premium sponsor, so just seeing their take on the idea of finance is really um, compelling. And I always, yeah, I remember seeing my mom, like my parents, my parents were older parents. They were, my mom was 36 when she had me. Mm-hmm. So I remember seeing AARP magazines when I was a kid around yep. the house. Yep. Same, <laughs> same. My mom was 35 when she had my sister. So yeah, very much. Um, so I just remember like, they've kind of always been a part of that organization. Mm-hmm. And part of her speech today was, you know, older people are, they're working longer, they're not retiring right away. And so they've kind of had to redefine mm-hmm. who they, their target market because it's not 50 year olds anymore. And they're not retired, yeah. right? A- A- yeah. American Association of Retired, retired persons. persons. They're not retired. They're not retired. So they were actually the sponsors of the coffee as well. So it was like on the banner to buy a coffee. It's like coffee by AARP, rethink possibilities. Or what was their slogan? Real possibilities. Real possibilities. So it's right over the coffee. Yes. <laughs> Bethany's kind of real possibilities with coffee. Um, yep. That should be coffee slogan all the time. Real possibilities. Yes. So those were the, spe- and Claudia Pennington spoke for, um, uh, for FinCon about the marketplace, the freelancer marketplace. Yes. Which is a way for freelancers to connect with brands. Um, and it's free to sign up. You just create an account mm-hmm. and you can put yourself out there and brands can check out your work and see if they're interested in working with you, which. So now I have to do that. Yes. <laughs> we have to do that. So it's on the list to do as well. Um, so yeah, and all this came before the main keynote speaker who I was super excited to, to, so this is my first time hearing about him and he was actually very inspiring. Yeah. So So, that that was Ramit Sethi, author of, I will teach you to be rich. Um, he's actually my age, (laughs) not your age (laughs) because Julia is younger than everybody. Only a few years. So he's in that very, like millennial Gen X kind yeah. of cross, you know, straddling the two. Yeah. Um, but he was fantastic. I, I loved him because I've been following him for about, um, I want to say 10 years. I feel like I grew up with him. Like he just got married. And, <laughs> I don't know why I was part of So wait, is he your celebrity that you follow like in the tabloids? Nice. Um, yeah. It's celebrity crush. Sure. Yes. Okay. Very much. So, you know, people like very follow exciting. Brad Pitt and everybody like via the tabloids. Um, yeah, he's the yes, person you follow. Yes, okay. uh, one of many. I, I have a long, <laughs> a long list of many that I follow. So sure. clearly, I am. I don't say new to the world. Yes, or to this. You part have to follow him. All, yes. So follow. yes, but he was very inspiring. This is my first time actually hearing about him mm-hmm. and hearing him speak. And yes, he was very inspiring. Well, what did you think of him? Like for the first time, what was your like initial impressions? Like three words that you thought. <sighs> well, outgoing. Yeah. Um. Definitely inspiring. Mm-hmm. Because he said a lot of stuff that resonates with me. Yeah. He's very, like, no BS, right? Like, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be the third one. Yeah, sorry. I just, like... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, he's, he's like, this is who I am. Mm-hmm. This is what I believe in. Mm-hmm. Take it or leave it. Yeah. He's very unapologetic. Yeah. Like, yeah. And he actually said, be unapologetic. hmm So what are his three points? Can we remember? Um... Did you write it down in your notes? I did write it down in my notes. I'm trying to see if I can use my brain. Uh, it so was She took notes. I did. I didn't. Notes. Um, develop your own point of view. That was the big, I would say that's the yeah. the takeaway. Because people are interested so much in what, they know the advice. It's like, yeah. what, what, do, what do you bring to the conversation? How can you, um, what's your point of view? Like, what's your unique mm. point of view? So that's how I would sum it up, right? Yeah, I don't think it, like, I think I'm, I didn't say anything to him, but I think I mentioned it to you, like point of view on what. Mm. Yeah, you get a multiple like money, view, right? politics, yeah. mm-hmm. life in general. Mm-hmm. And he never really addressed on what, but I think it's just more life in general. Mm-hmm. What you're talking about, yeah. your subject. Like, yeah. Right. Like if yours is yeah. travel, what's your point of view on travel? Yeah. I can tell you your point of view. Just do it. <laughs> That's your point of view. Do it. Do yeah, it often. Basically. <laughs> That's your point of view. Travel, travel often. Yes. Travel more than two. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Um, yeah. So I was telling her what four trips this year. Four trips this year. Everything all in will be about $10,000. Yes. Oh, that was a question too. Like, what do you love to spend money on? Was one of his questions. I'm like, travel. Yeah. Hand down, travel. And you love it and you do it. Mm-hmm. And that's amazing. Like, as we were saying, like, yours is, is so cool. Um, mine is different because what I love and what I spend the most money on are different. 
because I love travel and I love luxury and I love bags. <laughs> <laughs> so I do spend on them, not a lot, but I spend. Um, but I don't travel. And mm-hmm. what I spend my money on is my housing costs, like people yeah. know that for my channel. Yeah. And the value that is is um, stability and family because it's mm-hmm. it's kind of really uniting with my family um, to save our, save our home. Um, but that right now, those don't align. What I love to spend money on is not what I'm spending the most on. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I'm working out. That's my reality right now and how I work it out. Um, but it's question like, how would you four exit? Like, right. How would you turn it up? Yeah. Times so four? like if you could quadruple your mm-hmm. the budget for what you love to do. And I was like, I just go more places. Mm-hmm. And I know you said, well, what, like, would you, take luxury vacations mm-hmm. and I'm like no I just go more places <laughs> I would take four really nice vacations <laughs> and he well yeah and he said because mm-hmm. he's that's I guess that's the response that he gets from a lot of people like I would just eat out at more restaurants mm-hmm. and he's like but why don't you go to a restaurant that's nicer mm-hmm. you know like don't go to the same I don't say cheap places mm-hmm. but go to a nicer restaurant like mm-hmm. a Michelin rated restaurant that normally Sick. you couldn't go to Sick. So, I mean, and if you're into that, yeah, yeah, I would do it, but I'm in travel and I want to see as many places exactly. as possible. Yeah, that's your thing is like the experiences yeah. and like having a breadth of experience. I'd minutes. rather, well, yeah, and, um, Rick Steves, mm-hmm. the travel guy, I think it's it was him. So cute. I think it was him <laughs> said, don't spend money, like spend money on experiences, mm-hmm. right? So travel, like, fly cheaply, you know, stay in hostels, but don't skimp on experiences. So spend the money at the museum. Mm-hmm. You know, if you want to go, I don't know, kayaking on a river, uh, yeah. spend the money to go kayaking on the river. Mm-hmm. You know, like don't, don't skimp on experiences when you travel. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you talk about the rest of the day? You want to talk about it? Because yours actually yeah. aligns with your values. <laughs> So I waited in line when I thought it was a massive line. So first of all, they had, they did this oh, ice yeah. breaking, right? Ice breaking game where they they had four giant, like, what do they call them? Like founding fathers. Yes. Like, like people in costume being founding fathers. And they handed us all a different colored card. There were four car, mm-hmm. card colors that corresponded with the president. Um, they raced each other. And if you had the color that corresponded with the card, you won a prize. And I happened to have a color that won, that corresponded the with the prize, winning yeah. president. So the prize was Ramit's book for free. So I thought it was really cool. So I got the book, which I've actually never read. I just read his like articles and stuff. Um, so I got the book and I waited in line to get it signed. And I thought it would be like a 10 minute line, like 40 minutes no. later, still in line, <laughs> um, chatted with some really amazing people. So it was a good experience. Um, and mm-hmm. you spent like five seconds, whatever, talking to them. Cause I've, I've actually taken his course, the Earn 1K course at just foundation beginning level. Um, I actually ended up earning 1K, which is great. Um, oh, that the challenge you love to make up 1,000 in a month? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it was amazing. I got I got a picture with him and I got my book signed, which was amazing. That's like what I wanted out of it. So that was like me done, like so for the rest she- of the time. <laughs> and literally, I was like, I'm, like, I'm done. done. I'm done. I'm through. And by this time, it's like what? It's like 10.30, maybe? 10.30? Yeah. I think it was like 11.30. 11.30. So yeah. by the time, while I was off doing that, <laughs> My phone was dying. <laughs> like, I don't know what happened to my charger, but my charger died last night. So I went to Home Depot, bought a cord. It was just the cord part that died. Like the actual plug that plugged into the outlet was fine. So I just bought a, I bought a cord and I had to send her a text. I'm like, I'm at 18% battery life. So I'm going to turn off my phone. Um, went and found a little breakfast place. And then I just kind of waited for you outside the ballroom where he was signing the books. And then so we met up. And she looks at me, she's like, I have a cord, but I don't have the wall plug, but I didn't buy one because I went back at the Airbnb. And I'm like, you want to go back to the Airbnb? Mm-hmm. She's like, yup. And I'm like, okay. I was seriously thinking that. And I'm like, but there's, they still had sessions this afternoon. And I'm there like, tons of sessions. Did I go to, did we go to any of the sessions? No. no. <laughs> so we come back to the Airbnb, had lunch. Like you took a nap. Yeah, I took a nap. <laughs> and I actually went out. And did things. Yeah. I went to. Speaking of experiences, right? Yeah. So speaking of experiences, I went to the Holocaust Museum, which today was actually free. That's amazing. So FYI, September to February, you do not need tickets to go to the Holocaust Museum in Washington, D.C. I didn't know that until I looked up online. I'm like, oh, I don't need advanced tickets. I can just walk in. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, go in, you know, go through. They have you go through security. You can't bring liquids in like you, like same at the airport, right? You can't Mm -hmm. take liquids past security. Same thing here. So I go through security expecting to like buy a ticket at some point. 
No, I walked right in. That's great. It was free. It's really cool. So yeah, walked right in. You said they gave you the booklet, like the booklet. Yeah, they tell you. So you walk in like the start, the part where it starts, and off to the side they have like they have booklets, and each it rep, each book is a person that actually lived during the Holocaust. So you pick up a book, and it's divided up by years. It has like a short biography of you know when they were. It has a picture, their names, when they were born, and where they're from. It has a short biography, and it's like like pre thirties to like thirty three, and then thirty three to thirty nine. And then 39 to 45, and then like after the war. So you find out if they lived or died. Mm -hmm. Starts on the fourth floor, and then you work your way down. And as you get to each new floor, you have to read that part of their their biography to see where they are in that part of the war or time period, I guess. Mm -hmm. Should I tell them what happened to my woman? Oh, yeah. That's cool. Yeah, so it was sad. Um, toward the end, it was, I had an elderly woman, she and her husband were arrested and deported and they were never heard from again. So really sad. Presumed. Presu yeah, so presumed dead. Cause if you never heard from again, that's usually, yeah. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So that was sad. Yeah. <laughs> that was your experience. I was not expecting that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was, Kind of had to expect it being sobering because mm -hmm. it is a Holocaust museum. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Um, and there's actually, when you're going from the fourth floor and you're walking to go down to the third, mm -hmm. they've got, you walk through like a glass hallway and the glass is etched with the names of towns oh, wow. that were wiped out wow. or wiped off the map. Interesting. Just because really interesting. they had such a high Jewish population. Wow. Huh. Wow. Yeah. Because a lot, yeah. The sign that said, the sign that was next to it said, the Jewish population often gave the towns they lived in a Yiddish name. Mm -hmm. And so it had the Yiddish name broken down by country. So Germany, Czechoslovakia, Poland. Cool. Um, and those towns were basically wiped off the map. Well, gosh. It's interesting that there's like a, it's good there's a memorial to that. Right? Yeah. Like a, a commemoration. So I was actually there. I got there at two o'clock. I was there for the entire, th I left about 20 minutes before they closed. Wow. Got there at two o'clock. They closed at 520. I didn't know, I didn't expect to be there that long, mm -hmm. but I was. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah. So I think you texted me at around what, yeah. like five, five Yeah. that you were heading back. Um, and yeah. you got back pretty quickly. You took the bus, right? To get there? I took the train. Train. Yeah. yeah. So really Wait, the to, metro? You took the metro? Yeah. Ah, I love the DC metro. I'm really good at public transportation mm -hmm. figuring my way up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Figure out how to get around. So yeah. Sweet. Very cool. It's not that hard. Yeah. You're back in like 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. So it was a quick sort of get back. I love the DC metro too. Oh my gosh. I was telling her, it's like it's three, it touches three states and it's open until 4 a.m. and then it, it, it stays open until 4 a.m. then it opens again at 6 a.m. so it's like or maybe earlier than that um so you're stuck for about like maybe an hour and a half two something hours. like that yeah but it's like ridiculously convenient you can go out like to dinner and a show and be in three travel to three different states using just the dc metro that's nice yeah it's, it's like giant with like a giant arch that like leads down like down the, the mm -hmm. i took pictures oh my gosh it's gorgeous um so much fun so you got back at 5 20 um i got us some groceries. Yeah. We've been snacking a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> FYI, Julia's new chip combo is salt and vinegar and French onion dip. Mm -hmm. right? Very good. Delicious. Things we, we learned. Did. Yep. <laughs> Things we learned at Fincon. I discovered, yeah, I discovered that like a month ago. I was at the store, bought some French onion dip, and they didn't have like regular chips. So I just bought, for some reason, I just decided to buy the salt and vinegar, and it's actually pretty good. Really good. Very good. Who knew? Yes. Yeah, so that was like our appetizer, would you say, right? Yeah. Then we ordered from the Afghan Grill. It's just down the street from us. This place where we're staying, this neighborhood is amazing for food. There's really, really good food. We had Nando's last night and mm -hmm. then Afghan today. Which one did you like better? I like the Afghan place yeah. better. Cool. Well, I think Nando's is an actual like chain though. It is. Oh, for sure is. Yeah. Um, mostly in the UK. So Nando's is South African and Afghan is Afghan. Afghan. Yeah. We have to do Ethiopian at some point, right? Yeah. That's we talked about Ethiopian. I haven't had Ethiopian. 
a years. long time. Me neither. It's wow. really good. Yummy. So that's next on our list. Um, and now it's 8.30. Yeah, remember at 6.30 we thought I was late. <laughs> I, I'm getting my second wind now, though. I'm feeling it. Are you feeling it? I'm kind of like... I'm still a little tired because I spent the afternoon walking yeah. around. As opposed to sleeping? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, I'm just about ready for bed. I'm like, all right. Wait, how, do, how long did you sleep this afternoon? Like, not well, like maybe okay. an hour and a half. Like, okay. For me, that's not a long time. Okay. So I, I can sleep pretty well. Like, I'm, I'm a champion sleeper. Yeah. <laughs> really good. Not to toot my own horn, but I'm good at sleeping. Just saying. Um, yeah. So that was our day. That was FinCon day two. Yeah. So tomorrow we have to look at the schedule and see yes. what we're going to do and figure out. So we're hoping to meet up with Rachel and Jen for breakfast um, before. And then and tomorrow starts at a more reasonable time. 1030. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a regular work day. And I'm like, mm. <laughs> but there's so much to do and so many people to see mm-hmm. and so much to experience that you really feel like you're and getting. I feel like Wednesday probably should have been like a precursor. So we walked in to check in, just like people madness everywhere. <laughs> Insane. Oh my goodness. But definitely good. Really good mm-hmm. and inspiring. So good day. Inside. Inside. Cool. I'd say it was a good day. Me too. So yeah, I got to do what I wanted to do. Yep. Same. Chill. Experience some new things and process those new things. So it's a good day for sure. Yeah. And our meat had some really good. Yeah. I tell you. I don't know. Basically, I decided to, based on his talk this morning, and then I know I've talked to you about it, mm-hmm. I'm going to change the focus of my channel. So mm-hmm. I'll go into that in another video. Yay! Later. More to come. More to come. Stay tuned. <laughs> right? <laughs> gonna work on it. Yeah. For sure. So, I mean, paying off that is great, but I need to move away from that. Well, just more into what I'm passionate about. about. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yep. Absolutely. So, still going to be paying off debt, but with more of a focus on like travel and stuff. But I'll leave that for another video. Yeah. I'll tell you more to come. More to come. All right. Okay. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.